Welcome to Quads vs Triangles. Oh, and there's Engons as well. So, in this video, we're going to go over how it's better overall to make your models using quads. And we'll go on to explain what they all are in a few moments. Whatever you use, it is essentially being converted back to triangles anyway in the background. And what we want to make sure is that we have full control over our geometry. And we're going to be watching out for making things non-planar. I'll we'll explain that a bit more later on. So, what are they? Well, as you probably guess, I'm very sorry if this insults anybody out there, especially the one on the left. This green object in front of us is known as a triangle. It's got three points joined together with three lines. It's the most simple 2D shape we can have, and it's also the simplest face we can have in our models. Quads are one vertex up from that, so it's essentially a, sim a simple quad. Here is a square, and everything we've been making so far, um, the chess pieces, the bowling pin, the bowling ball was made out of triangles, but the everything else has been quad based. Just by the way that we've managed to construct it, it's ended up as quads. And we're about to start making a couple of pieces where we may get um, some non-planar quads, and we'll explain that in a bit. And then we've got engons, and the engons is not just five, but it's anything with more than five edges. So five plus vertices and five edges, making up that one face. Now, in general, we want to avoid triangles and avoid engons, and that's what we call good mesh topology. Now, if we've got a load of triangles, it can mean it's unpredictable how the mesh deforms or animates, and engons, well, we're leaving our, our mesh, our geometry, to the mercy of Blender on how it decides to deform an engon of all things. Anyway, so let's hop over into Blender and see what these things look like. So the first thing we should look around in Blender is something that we have been working on. So we've been working on our lovely chessboard here. So let's take a closer look at it. So let's hop over from the rendered mode into solid mode. In fact, I'm going to hit wireframe mode here just to see how things are laid out. We need to go into something else. Let's go into the chessboard mode, into edit, and well, actually, let's hide everything else in this case. So let's hide these things here, keeping the chessboard surround about. There we go. So we've just got the chessboard surround here. Now if we have a closer look at everything that goes on here, we will see that there are literally just quads everywhere. Uh, one, two, three, four, and there's a quad there, there's one there. If we zoom in this face here is made of and then face select excellent. That face there is made of four edges and so forth and so forth so everywhere on this particular model of our board we've just got quads so let's take a look at something else that we've made um, in the bowling scene we had our bowling ball and if we zoom into that and switch on over into edit mode we can see everything's made up of triangles with the exception of these holes now if I can get a good look at the hole we can see that these these faces here are quads, and it ends in a triangle um, in the middle here. Now there are some times when you, triangles are what we call acceptable, if you will, and that is when it comes to a point like it does here, where and that point is called a pole. Now a good example of a pole, if I create myself a new Blender file, um, and delete our cube there. If we create ourselves a mesh object that is a UV sphere, if we go to the top of a UV sphere, you'll see that everything on it is quads until you get to the very top, which is a, a load of triangles meeting at one point, which makes it a pole where things join. Now, the problem with triangles and poles is if we went to go select this edge loop running around here, it would select it. Um, but if we select this one here, it terminates at the pole. Blender just doesn't know where to go. It can't go straight over. It's got another... Um, I can't remember, 31 possible paths that it can take from there, so it cannot draw a loop all the way around. So, but there are places where poles are acceptable. Now, engons are a funny one. So an engon is basically a face that's made up of more than four vertices. 
So if we get the basic cube here, and we hop on over into edit mode, and we grab one of these edges and just subdivide it. So we can do that in the tool shelf here, just hit subdivide once. And now we have a face that's made up of five vertices. It still looks like a quad, but we actually have a vertex here that we can pull out and reshape if we wanted to. Now you also see that this little dot that's usually in the center of our uh, squ squaring cubes has been moved. It's been moved on this uh, face and this one. So the center of the face has been shifted because there's an extra vertex here. So it's been weighted more to this side because there's one, two, three vertices on this side of our cube and only two on this side. Okay guys, it's challenge time. I would like you to make the queen. So, go ahead and make the queen without the spikes on the crown itself. We'll be dealing with those in the next section. Um, make sure that the model is made of quads only. The base itself can be left as an angle. So if you turn the queen upside down, you'll notice you've got a, an octagon on the bottom there. Uh, don't worry about that, leave that as it is. But just make sure the rest of your model is actually an end on. Go around and make sure there are four sides of her face. And then suggest I suggest that you start with the bishop as a base piece. It's close to the Queen's dimensions and you can essentially just take the Bishop's hat off, make the neck slightly bigger and then plonk the uh, crown for the Queen on top. So pause the video now and go give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's hop straight on over into Blender. Right, so over in Blender I've found our Bishop. So the first thing I'm going to do is go File, Save. As, and I'm going to save this uh, low poly queen. Get my cursor in the right place. There we go. Low poly queen. Excellent. And I'm going to check at the top that I'm working on the low poly queen. Brilliant. And I'm going to change the mesh name over here just to work that out. Brilliant. So I've got all the uh, basics lined up now. So let's go and change the reference material. Let's go and find the. Uh, where is it? Staunton Queen. Brilliant. And we're already in orthographic projection, so that's great. So we just need to flip over into the front view. Okay. Now, I think this picture is actually a bit small. Certainly the bishop itself last time was absolutely fine, but I think the queen is a little bit larger than this. So I'm going to use it as a basis, um, but then I'm probably going to enlarge my model afterwards. Anyway, so let's zoom into the top here. I'm just going to make the picture a bit stronger in the scene so uh, similar to the bishop itself who has kind of a hat on if you will the queen has also got her hat on or a crown and it looks like up until this point on the image is the same as this point on our model so I'm going to use border select and support deselect everything first hop over into edit mode switch over to border select and just highlight everything up to the bottom of the crown so that's absolutely fine and when I delete because I haven't selected these edges here it's not a big deal because when I delete I can select vertices as the option to delete and that would also delete the edges itself uh oh I've forgotten to delete the other side and there's a couple of options of course I can switch into wireframe mode or I could have turned on limit selection to visible this one next to face select here on the 3d editor header so i'm going to flip back into uh, front view here we go then using border select by pressing b again we can go around that excellent delete and this time the vertices as well so there we go we've got our model here now i'm going to grab the neck so again i'm going to Press B, highlight all of that lot, and just use the 3D manipulator widget and lift it up to about that height. Brilliant. I'm going to select this edge loop running around here. So I'm in edge select, that one there, and just scale it outwards ever so slightly. And the same with this edge loop just above it. Let's scale that out. And I'm just going to bring this very top bit down. Okay, to about there. So that's that bit done, and now we can go ahead and create the rest of the Queen's Crown. We can see that it goes up and then back in on itself, and we can deal with the geometry for that in a bit. Um, but I'm going to simply just extrude from the top here, 
in the Z axis to. Uh, do we want to keep that ridge there? I'm going to ignore that ridge. I'm going to go to here and then all the way to the top of our crown. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to scale that out. And since we're locked in the X uh, Z plane, we are definitely scaling only along the XY plane. Right, so now I can tilt round, come out of wireframe mode. I'm going to fill in that face. Now that is one big end gone at the moment, so that's fine. We're going to still make it quads because after we filled it in, we can then press I to inset. And we'll worry about making, well it'll probably come to a pole at the very top. So that's going to be at the top of our crown there. And let's extrude that back into our model. And we can worry about the angles and everything in a bit. We're going to inset back in and pull this bit up and that will create the top of the queen. And let's switch back over into front mode. Right. And then we've got a ball on top as well. So perhaps I lifted up that just a little bit high to about there. And then we're going to create a similar ball to that which we put on top of the bishop. So I'm going to move the 3D cursor to around there for us, for the ball itself. I'm going to make sure the 3D cursor's position in the properties pane. Um, X definitely needs to equal zero. Y definitely needs to equal zero as well. And Z, well, that's, that's not a problem at the moment because we can move that to our heart's content in a bit. So we need to add a UV sphere. So let's go and add a UV sphere and it needs to have eight segments to match up with our model and if we go to four that's brilliant let's in the rings and let's scale that down so it's about the right size perfect uh, lift that up and this is where your artistic talents come into play I'm actually going to separate this from our model with P by selection so we've got the little uh, mesh that we've been working on separate because so I'm going to recombine it back into the model in a moment. I'm going to go back to the main body itself into edit mode and select that top and just scale it in so it comes to more of a point. I'm going to add a loop around the top there just so I can manage the way that that sort of her hat if you will comes in her crown comes in around there so it's a bit more curved and then finally I'm going to combine these two together I'm happy with how they're laid out let's just have a look the lines will all converge as they need to be right so I'm going to use a boolean operator here so I'm going to select our oh, there's still a cube in the scene somewhere by the looks of things let's get rid of that that's messy so with that rogue cube gone, we can select our bishop and operate, uh, let's add a modifier, a boolean. We're going to combine, so a union between that and the one further down and click apply. I'm happy with how it looks. And then if we go and hide our ball, that's gone. And the bishop, well, this is bishop, I should say queen low poly queen excellent and we can get rid of the ball on top now because it's just doubling up on what we have already excellent I'm happy with that apart from I do want let's flip round to the front I do want it to be a bit more uh, jagged if you will or spiky so we need to make these uh, the top of this crown a bit spikier I suppose so let's grab the inside edge let's hop over into edit mode Turn off seeing through our model so I've got more control I'm going to grab this edge loop here and just scale it outwards to bring it more to a point in fact I might scale it right on top of that and get rid of this ridge running round. So I'm going to turn on snapping, I'm going to merge the vertices and I'm going to make sure snapping is to the vertex. Excellent. So we're going to scale, I'm just going to lock it to there and that should have made that perfect. 
Excellent. So the next thing would be to pop the uh, spikes around this top edge loop here, and we'll be doing that in the next lecture. See you soon.